Hey, I'm making this video. I'm going to go through an Oregon septic replacement and a customer had given me some uh, pictures to go through and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of try and design this uh, system and it looks like it's a replacement and it's a, um, an advanced treatment tank and a septic tank and a pump discharging to a hydro splitter and some leaching trenches. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to landplan.io and I've already logged in a couple times. So first I'm going to go to create project from map and I'm going to, there's a couple options. You got the um, address search, you got the coordinates, you can enter coordinates and you can select the um, state and the townships or the um, county I'm sorry and uh, so let's just search for the address I think that was on the the file and it's um, 11282 Pacific Coast Highway Seal Rock so let's go ahead um, 11282 Pacific Coast, just start typing. Okay, so I got a couple hits that um, I got 11282 Northwest uh, Pacific Coast Highway, Seal Rock. It looks like that's a perfect match, so I'll click on that. And what we do is we send our latitude, longitude of that point to our database and pull back any parcel that we have for that property. And this is the uh, GIS data provided by the county. So it's, um, you can do accuracy checks on that. But if you click on proceed, I'll just kind of cut this down a little bit, the title, just to make it more... Um, appealing and the and the title later so everything looks good you can add the owner's name at this point and um, I don't think that was provided on the documentation so I'll just go ahead and leave that out and we just have some basic information here so this I think is a two bedroom and I think the minimum flow rate would be 300 gallons per day and I need to um, correct that uh, if that's wrong but um, I need to talk to uh, talk to Joe or, or somebody uh, professional about that so we will work on that and I will just kind of leave the rest default because I'm not sure about any of this uh, there wasn't really a, a soil data attached to that so and this is the property so you can zoom in with the mouse wheel it's best to use a mouse um, with this program. So um, some of the map tiles might be slow to load at first. So you can, as the as you use the program and go to these different properties, the tiles will load a little faster. So that's how the program works. And we have on the left-hand side our um, uh, layers that you can turn on and off. We have the aerial image here, Bing aerial image. We have um, some Oregon state imagery. And you can try some of that out. So if something doesn't load uh, quickly, you can shut it off or just kind of let it load a, a little bit. But once it does load, it'll get faster. So this imagery looks like it's not as good as the Bing. So I'll shut that off and just use the Bing aerial image for now. And I'll pull up the drawing. And it looks like there's a, um, a driveway on the north side. And then from the house to the ocean bluff, there's 113 foot, and then there's a garage and a two bedroom house. So what I'll do is this looks to be like the two bedroom house. So I'll take the house tool. So we have two tools in the septic tool set. We have the, for buildings, we have the building with flow and an auxiliary building. And I'll click the building with flow and I'll click on the snap guides and what the snap guides are going to do is as you draw it will provide uh, this on the second point that you add it will give you the option to um, snap to a 90 degree um, barrier that it provides so 
click once to add a point, double click to end the feature. So you got to double click if you want to end the feature. And what we'll do next is we'll get the auxiliary building tool and I'll keep the snap guides and we're just going to do the garage now. So let's check the drawing. There weren't any dimensions on the drawing, so I'll just go ahead and um, just sketch out a garage here. It looks like I can see it almost through the tree line, but uh, it's not too clear. So if you wanted to rotate or interact with your features that you've drawn, there's the edit tools are going to let you interact with all the features. So if you click on the rotate tool and select by clicking once the feature you drew, you can, um, there's this little ball here that'll appear. You can just tug on that and pull it to where you want it to go. And um, similarly, if you use the select tool and click on the feature, or sorry, if hit the escape first to escape out any of any tools that you have on the map or selections and click on the uh, select tool. And you can see we have a flow rate here with the daily flow. Um, we're going to improve this for Oregon here in the near future. And um, so that you can change that for now to the flow rate you want. I think it should be two bedrooms. And I think it was 300 is the minimum daily flow rate for any system. So next we are going to add some tanks or the sewer main, sorry. So we have, it looks like an existing sewer main coming out of the side of the house, the southwest side. And we have the ta old tanks here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the pipe tool. And we have uh, different options for your pipes. So you select sewer main, and we automatically snap to the building. So if you hover over the the building, you're gonna the cursor is gonna snap directly to it, and you can change your snap settings for any feature uh, by clicking on this snap tool options button. This will bring up this dialog, and you can um, let's say we wanted to also snap to the auxiliary building. We can select that here, save it, and now we snap to this uh, auxiliary building as well. So. That's how the snaps work. So let's go ahead and, and mimic this drawing here. Let's go ahead and... All right, so I'll do that again because it looks like it just comes out directly here. And so let's draw the new sewer line, which it looks like it's come at um, an angle here. So I'm not sure if they if the old tanks were abandoned or not. So we'll double click to end. And what we do with the um, a lot of the septic features that you're drawing on the map, what we do is we provide an elevation data as well. So as you clicked here to start, we sent that latitude and longitude at that point to our digital elevation model, and we were returning this elevation for that point on the Earth and. Similarly, we do that with the pipe end. So it looks like it's about the same elevation um, according to our elevation model. And um, what we do with the pipe inlet or the pipe invert at this point at the start of the sewer is we estimate a foot and a half lower. So that's how we estimate the invert elevation for a sewer main. You can change that here. Um, you can change the length, like say you wanted to round this off to just uh, 16, um, you could do that here. You could change the, the diameter. You can change the materials here. So that will be how um, it's best to store the, the um, data you want here with the feature. And as I'm hovering over the sewer main, you can see a blue dot. So as I snap to it, you can see this blue dot. You can pull, click once and hold and then um, you can move the sewer main um, to a new location. As you do that, you can see the elevation is going to change and the length is going to change over here on the left. So that's how um, you can interact with uh, and, and edit your features is you just have to simply hover over it. But the tool has to be um, selected on the on the toolbar. So if I hit escape I and you can notice that 
um, as I hit escape, the tool, bar, tool was deselected and I cannot interact with this feature at all unless I go ahead and either select it or I um, click the pipe tool and select sewer main again. See how I can edit that again? So that's how that works. And what we're going to do next is we're going to build a treatment train. So you there the the documents received um, there is this treatment train that is going in it's installed and it consists of a septic tank a pretreatment tank an advanced treatment tank and a pump tank a pump crock and it's got this uh, little giant pump in there so what we do is we're going to click on the treatment train tool once and then we're going to snap to the end of the sewer click once oh sorry i didn't select the treatment train tool so it's selected now and then i'll snap to the end of the sewer main and what this tool lets you do is build and save commonly used treatment trains and um, you could uh, add a septic tank first to build your treatment trains so um, for this drawing, um, it looks like a Michael Michael's uh, septic tank. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the thousand gallon um, Michael's precast concrete septic tank. Click on that. So that is now added to our treatment train, and I'm going to add a treatment uh, tank. And I'm just going to start typing in the treatment tank I want. I want an Aqua Safe. So this is an AquaSafe standard one. The standard treatment standard two would include a UV light. So I'll select this one. It's gonna ask me what component I want and just go ahead and add that. Next, I'm gonna add a dose tank. So we have the Orenco PVC pump basin in this, um, in the order of the um, diameter of the width of the t of the basin and the um, height of it. So they come in different sizes and we have all of those preloaded in. And obviously the inlet size height is a custom order and stuff and you can change that. I'll show you how. So let's just go ahead for this demo and select a, uh, let's just do a 72 inch, um, uh, Let's do a 72 inch, 18 inch wide, and we'll click on that. So, and what I'm gonna do now is I have a completed treatment train. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. So I'm going to um, just title this something that I can recognize in my list. I'm just gonna say two bedroom for two BR for two bedroom, um, aqua safe, um, I'll just do like Michael's AquaSafe PB uh, 18. So, and I'll do like, maybe do like dash 72. So that will kind of give me a visual on code for myself to remember okay if i ever want to put this treatment train in again I, I got this in my list and i can select that just by clicking on that and if i go ahead and draw this now it's going to draw the components in the order that you added them to the treatment uh, train so if i click on the select tool actually let me remove the aerial image because it's a little easier to see so if I select on the the first tank, it's showing me that it's the Michaels uh, precast. If I want to check out the um, the uh, spec sheet, we have that here. So we got you got that on the left hand side. Um, we have the tank dimensions, and let's say you want to um, say for the um, the pump basin, you can actually change a little bit more for dosing systems. You can change whether you want it time dosed or demand dosed. And one thing you can do is, is change the inlet height. So um, we have the tank height and the width, the length and the width are, are the same because it's a circle. 
the length and the width are the same. And then we have the invert height is set to 54. Now you, this is a custom setting. So say, you know, the, the, the outlet of the pretreatment system is coming in real high. You could set that a little bit higher. You know, you could say, okay, the, the inlet is coming in at like 65 or something. And then you could say the outlet is, you know, just the same cause it's probably coming out the top of the dose tank. So, so if this all looks good, you can use this tool here. It's the select features by dragging. So it's like a multiple selection. So you can click once and hold it and drag, and then you can click the move key. So you're going to move the tanks right up to the sewer main. And if it ever gets like a little bit finicky, you can zoom in by just uh, one click and it should do um, handle that. So. So you can move these a little bit closer or you could keep them the same. So we'll, what we'll do next is um, I'll take a look at the drawing and we're gonna try and draw this trench out here. So what we can do is um, draw an, a distance here, a measurement. It looks like it's 11 foot from the uh, garage. So what we'll do is we'll click on the measure tool. We'll click on the snap and we'll snap to the auxiliary building feature. So this is gonna to snap to here. I'm gonna click once and if you hit the tab key and you can see that, um, that it brings up this dialog here. So that, so if you, if the cursor is in here and you can click inside of this distance toolbar toolbar or um, input and you could just type start typing in with the backspace type in 11 and then if you hit the tab key you can see that it moves to the through the form to the right and if you hold the shift and tab key you can go back so tab to go forward and shift and tab to go back so if I want to go forward, if I'm happy with this azimuth, so the azimuth is um, on a zero is north, and then it goes all the way to 360. So that's how the azimuth works. And if I go ahead and click into this uh, distance box again, and if I want to just move the cursor to the azimuth that I want, and then if I start backspacing to 11 and I click um, add and tab over and click add finish point and finish drawing, that'll add that 11. And you can always um, click on this and you could rotate this a little bit if you wanted to, to get it like that. So that's how that works. Um, you could do that again or you could actually just um, right click over this feature. Let's see select this you can right click over this feature if you right click it brings up a new menu so if you click on the measure length feature and you haven't click on that you'll bring up another menu where you can actually copy this feature and um, you can paste it into the measure length again and um, actually it puts it up a little bit further away so you could select it and click the move and move that down. So that's something else you can do there. And let's see. So we had 11 foot and then 10 foot. And so it looks like there's two trenches. There's one that, um, so the total trench is 90 foot easy flow drain field. So if we got 30 here, 60, 70, 80, 90. So it looks like this is one um, big trench. And what I'll do is I'll click on the trench tool and I'm gonna snap to the measurement, the measure length. And I'm gonna come in there and snap to that. And if you wanna hit the tab key, you could, um, you could just go ahead and make sure you're selected in there and you could type in 30 and then add point and finish drawing. So this is a 30 foot trench and what we can do is rotate that a little bit to 
keep it more in line with the garage. And what we'll do is, um, it looks like this is a 10 foot distance here. So we'll add a measurement and we'll snap to the distribution trench. And I'm gonna hit tab again, so I can do that uh, draw um, length completion. And I'm gonna add point and finish. So we got 10 foot buffer there. And let's go ahead and select the trench tool again. And I'm going to, uh, let's just go ahead and free freehand this. And I'm going to go ahead and just click into here. That that should be auto focusing, so I'll check that out. Uh, let's do 30 foot, add point and finish. So actually, this is going to be a little bit longer. So what we can do is um, uh, actually I'm just going to delete that and start over again because I forgot this was just one one big trench actually. So. I'm just going to snap to this and it's going to give me the total length here. So from here to 30 to 40, we got this 10 foot section and then we come up to 60. So this is looking pretty good about what we got here on the, the drawing. So we got 20 foot section, 30 foot section, and we had a measurement here, 43 foot to the property line. So let's check that out. We got select the measure tool and we go to snap to the parcel line. Let's do snap to the parcel line. And we got about 40, so we could do, you know, 43 feet. And we could just Go ahead and add point and finish. And then what we could do is we could select everything here and just move that all up to this line here. So we have this kind of going and it looks about similar to it. It looks like this is kind of right on with this, this, this two bedroom house. So maybe if we wanted to, we could switch that. And, um, so we need to dose up to this and um, I'm gonna click on the, so I think there's a valve here trying to replicate this drawing. I think there's a hydro splitter valve here. So I'm gonna click on valves and click on the box there or just click on the map. So this distribution method, it's um, basically a method to distribute the water you know, either via gravity or pressurized system. So we have distribution box as an option and automatic non-mechanical distributing valve. And we have a automatic solenoid valve. So if I click on the distributing valve, non-mechanical, um, it looks like uh, uh, there should be a hydro splitter in here, but I'm, I think I need to add that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select you know, a generic uh, valve for now, and I'll, I'll change that later. So it asks you if you want to generate manifolds, and the way we're going to do this is we'll probably just, um, because I don't know where they're connecting at, because it's an odd system type, I'm going to go ahead and deselect this and draw my own manifolds. And it's saying that um, number of trench trenches per run valve or per valve outlet is one and the number of outlets is two. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw it. And this uh, now just needs to connect with a force main and manifolds to each trench. So I'm gonna click on the force main and I'll just go ahead and draw a force main up here. Double click to finish and the final um, you could change the pipe diameter here. Say you want it maybe just inch and a half and um, you could do round it up maybe to include some pipe inside of the dose tank. And I'm going to select the manifold now. The manifold um, is going to be a pressurized system. So the this would be um, under pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap to the distribution trench. 
and I'm going to click that. Let's just go down to this one here. So I guess we'll just connect here at this point. And you can zoom in and see how I'm hovering over this. I can just tweak this a little bit. So this manifold is, is going to be uh, 17.38 feet, you know, and you could change this here. You could just round up if you want. And the um, diameter here, you could change this. Uh, so we're going to do another manifold. Um, I'm sorry, I deselected the manifold. I should have just kept it. And I'm going to draw another manifold. And I'm just going to double click to end it right there. And this one looks to be like around seven feet. So this looks pretty good to me. Um, you could add other features to the to the map. You could add a water well. So if you click on the water well feature, you know, you can click here. Just say that that's the water well. I'm not sure where it's at. Click once, hit escape. And then if you right click over top of the water well feature, you can um, select it. And then you could create a buffer. Say you wanted like a, a 100 foot buffer or let's just do like a 50 foot buffer and just you could title it whatever you want. And then that would draw on there. So I'm not sure if this is a requirement, but uh, you know, you could keep that on there. And for drawing a driveway, you click on the hardscape tool and you can snap to the building buildings. And then we could do the driveway coming in here. Not sure where it is totally exactly, but and double click to end. And let's say we wanted to the water well was let's move that out of here. So if you want to hold shift, you hold the shift key. So you select one feature, you can hold the shift key and click on the another feature you want. So both of those are selected. Now you can click the move key and you can move that. Let's say the water well is like right there and then hit escape to clear out key, uh, all the tools. And next you can go to print view. We have a specialized view for printing. And what you can do is you can select your scale, you can do landscape or portrait, and um, you can also zoom in and, and um, set the scale. And um, that's a way you can also set the scale is just by zo zooming in with the mouse wheel. But let's say you want to just have a, one of our preset scales, you can click on that and you can select what you want shown in the um, in the GIS legend. So you could um, deselect or whatever you want in there. Um, to do the labeling, to title, the, um, change any of the labels, you click on the, the, the feature or you can, you know, select the, the label sometimes. Um, there's also a, a method to uh, select the feature you want to label on this left hand side under this drop down edit labels. There's a you could like select the sewer main and see how the sewer main doesn't have a label. You could actually um, that's one of the things with the line features that you that we have. Uh, if it's a line feature, we automatically default to place the text on top of the line or on the line. So if you want it to change it to point, that sewer main label will pop up now because it doesn't over, you know, it overflows if it's the line's not big enough to hold the text. So let's say you want to do like a 20 foot sewer main. You could align the text to the right. And you could um, spin the text this way with this dial, and you can also set the offset of the text with this um, by clicking on the up and down arrows on the X offset and the Y as well on the Y offset. So just with this uh, methodology, you could kind of go through and so the, the water well buffer and the water well feature like right on top uh, labels are right on top of each other. You know, you could change this.
So let's go ahead and align the tank text to the right. And we're hopefully gonna have this be a little smarter in the future, the labeling system. So it's not um, overlapping, stuff like that. So we're gonna try and build the um, program to, to work a little bit better with that. So, and the distribution method, you could do like hydro splitter valve. I know we selected that other one and I will get the hydro splitter into the database here very shortly and then next few hours so and you could do two connections or something so let's align that to the left and then we'll spin it spin it down and if say how see how um this has some this red parcel line underneath of it and or over top of it you could actually set the uh, color of the background by clicking on this little eyedropper under the background color and you could just select white so it will it'll title that white and I'll put a white background behind it so so in this similar way you could go through style up the whole map um, we provide a default title which is the address you have the township and the uh, parcel ID so if you want to change any of that, typically I'll put in the company name, you know, and the date. So that's a good way to kind of document your drawings. Uh, make sure you save the print layout because it's different than the, the regular layout. So if you want to print a PDF of this map, then you can go ahead and print that and you can download it to your computer. And I'll just download it and as a so there you go with that. And you can also add text to the map right now. You can use the annotation tool, click on that, click on that once, and you could add some notes here. And then you know click X to close it and if you hover over it and you see the the move you can move that that way so you know you can click and hold it and move the text so you have some text on your map if you close this out um, what we do with with the program and we're trying to give you an easy way to save uh, your drawings and eventually we'll show you on the next video how to use the calculator and for now that's a good stop here it's a good way to get started so this is a saved project you know you can go navigate to your property reports by clicking on your top uh, right and this is in your uh, property reports now your projects and you can always go back to the map um, here you can archive your projects or delete them and you can add soil data edit the property uh, information and um, we can cover some more in the next video but I really appreciate your support and look forward to uh, helping you out uh, with your septic mapping thanks a lot